Last year, my pick for the worst film of the year was Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Therefore, I decided to buy an opening night ticket to see Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. Why? So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your thoughts on Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, as well as the Poovers in general. My thoughts aren't the right thoughts, they're just my thoughts, and I would love to hear yours, and let's get started. So as I mentioned in my introduction, last year, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey was my pick for the worst film of the year. My rationale for that was pretty simple and straightforward. Essentially, they figured out that Winnie the Pooh is in the public domain, and so they wrapped a very cheap Winnie the Pooh skin on a very generic, ultra-low budget slasher. So their film that by any other estimations would just be kind of a forgotten and lost low budget horror film got a bunch of attention because it had Winnie the Pooh in the title, even though the script itself and the movie didn't do anything meaningful with the Winnie the Pooh lore. And because the budget was so low, there was just nothing there of value. So it just felt like they were exploiting copyright to in public domain to make a cheap buck off of Winnie the Pooh as a killer. I went into this movie actually fairly optimistic, though, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first off, the budget was 10 times larger. So many of the issues with the first film is there's just no budget to be able to do anything. So they, they had a much larger budget because their first film was very profitable. Second reason, they hired the writer of Summer of 84 to write the script. And that's a, another kind of indie horror film from a few years back, but one, one that was actually pretty good, well-regarded. And so they brought in a much more well-regarded writer in the space to try and make the film better. And to that point, that guy, the writer of Summer 84, publicly said he does not think the first movie is very good. <laughs> so he's going into it like, yeah, I agree with you guys. There's problems here. Let me try and do something better. Third reason I went in, well, fairly optimistic, is that it seemed like they're actually trying to make some amends. Uh, if you're unaware of this, my good friend Cody Leach had a year-long feud with the producers of the film, and which was kind of, like, to us, was, like, mind-blowing that this was a thing that was happening, that the producers of a movie that people were actually heard of were publicly going after him as a critic, but they actually resolved all that. They, they sat down, they had a Zoom chat, talked through kind of what went down, and it, it was all, I don't know, very human. And it was a good thing. Like, internet conflict got resolved. People went, let's actually talk about this. And they did. And it ended up with a real positive note. I thought that was very cool. Fourth reason I went into this one positive and I'll actually start talking about the movie. At the time I watched this film, it had a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Hot dog. Which is insane that that was a thing that even happened for a brief window of time. The first movie has a 3% on Rotten Tomatoes. The second one had 100% for about 24 hours where there was only seven reviews counted. And they were all positive. Which the first movie had ha has over 60 reviews counted and only two positive. So even as the score was going to and has dropped, it still has four times as many positive reviews as the first film had in, in, in its run. So I went into this one surprisingly optimistic that it would be better. But was it actually good? Today's video is brought to you by Factor. I'm in a crazy busy period of life right now where I'm going to film festivals, comic cons, and trying to raise kids. Out of convenience, it's so easy to just eat junk. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. Factor's delicious meals are restaurant quality and they're ready to heat and eat whenever you are. No prep, no cooking skills required, and no cleanup. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including calorie smart, protein plus, and keto. 
I normally go for keto because I'm a high protein, low carb kind of guy. Also, there's more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day like breakfast, midday bites, and more. Head to factormeals.com slash seanchandler50 and use code seanchandler50 to get 50% off. That's code Sean Chandler 50 at factormeals.com slash Sean Chandler 50 to get 50% off. And I can safely say that this movie is better than the first film on every single level. This is essentially the Citizen Kane of poo movies. Now, does that mean that the movie is actually good? Or is that the equivalent of saying this is the best dog poo I've ever seen? Or Winnie Poo I've ever seen? Well, let's kind of unpack that a little bit. It's not, this is by no means great cinema. This is a schlock fest, but it's a schlock fest that kind of has a better idea of what it's supposed to be and has better writing and a budget to be able to kind of deliver the schlock that you want out of Winnie the Pooh as a killer. <laughs> like it, it does a better job of delivering on that. So to that point, this time around, there's an actual story. The first movie is pretty much just people go out into the woods and then a really bad Winnie the Pooh killer cosplay kills them and then the credits roll. This time we're like, it's following up the events of the first film, but the first film is also a film within this film. And there's a whole backstory of the way that Christopher Robin is treated by the community. And that kind of ties into all these things. There's a mystery surrounding the or like the disappearance of some kids. And like there's all these other things going on that are an actual plot that create intrigue in the story. That there's things you're frustrated by, the characters feel like humans. So there's actual improvements here. There's twists, there's turns, there's payoff an actual story, an actual movie. To that point, there's also better lore where the first movie, its explanation for what was going on with the Winnie the Pooh stuff was just very unsatisfying and it didn't didn't really feel like Winnie the Pooh stuff. Whereas here, there's this, they basically retcon all the lore, but they give you something that once again has a plot to an explanation that, that ties into things in a way that you kind of appreciate. The movie has a lot more kills. I think the director said in interviews there's six times as many kills. There's, there's something like that. Right from the beginning, a lot more people are getting slaughtered, murdered. And then the third act of the movie is pure carnage candy. I mean, it, it goes wild, dead bodies everywhere, goes nuts. And when you go to a movie like this, Winnie the Pooh is a killer. You want to see a lot of Winnie the Pooh is the killer, is a killer. And you get that. And... Also, the creatures here, well, right off the bat, the creatures look better. I, I think they said, like, the budget for the, the costume in the first movie was, like, $10,000, and the budget for the poo costume in this was, like, $350,000. <laughs> so it's like, the, the costumes look dramatically better, they're creepier, uh, they're able to do more. So there's just improvements there. But more importantly, they actually give the, the creatures a little bit of personality, a little bit of the Winnie the Pooh type characterizations, except as killers. Not as much as I would like, but there's more of that, and there's at least a couple, two or three, really good Winnie the Pooh lines from these killer creatures in the middle of the chaos. That you go, oh, they did it! They actually went for it! We'll come back to that later, but there's at least some of that in here to have a, a bit more fun. So, everything about this movie was better than the first one. But when you're starting at the bottom, when your point of reference is the worst movie of last year, a cynical attempt to exploit public domain without much of a budget to be able to pull it off, anything from there is better. <laughs> so what does better really mean in this context? Um, it's, it's tough to say. Uh, at what point in time does better be actually become good? So I still think that this movie took itself way too serious. It's about Winnie the Pooh and Tigger as killers. This is silly. It's ridiculous. And you have all of these classic Poohisms 
that you can use. You could take them and turn them on their head and turn them into a murder. And I, I don't know, you know, it's tough to know exactly how much because public domain is Winnie the Pooh, but like the Disney adaptation came decades later. That's not in the public domain. So I don't know how much of the Poohisms they can actually use as public domain and how much ties into Disney. So maybe that was a little bit of a restriction in both of these films. But you at least had a little bit of it here. But you, as soon as you heard some of these lines, you went, that's what I want. That's what I want the whole movie to be. And it's not. It, it like it's pretty dramatic. There's you know tragic story about kids being kidnapped and what, kind of what's going on with all of this and abuse. It, it's super heavy in a movie about Winnie the Pooh killing people. And and so it, it's it's constantly fighting with itself as to are we being serious or are we being silly? And I think it would have been wiser to just embrace the silliness and have fun with it. There's a lot more fun being had here than in the first one, but still not enough. And still not enough pooism. Still not enough of feeling like it's actually the Winnie the Pooh lore turned into this twisted slasher. It's it like the first one felt like a bad Winnie the Pooh skin wrapped around a very generic, bad, low-budget slasher. This feels like a much better Winnie the Pooh skin wrapped around a better generic, low-budget slasher, but a much higher, low-budget slasher. So it's still kind of the same thing, but a better version of a bad thing. Did I have some fun with it? Absolutely I did, because... It knows at least its ultimate job is to deliver a lot of kills. And there's actual tension in some of the sequences. Like when the there's some stuff where Pooh does some things with a bear trap and you, you piece together what he's about to do to the, to the person. You go, oh, you feel that tension in you and you're like, oh, that's that's pretty clever. And you're waiting for the gore. Um, there's some nasty stuff in here. Uh, there's just a, a good bit of actual solid low-budget gore-fest slasher stuff. And that's a big thing that you want from a project like this. But simply put, this movie is much closer to what we kind of maybe hoped the first movie would be in delivering Winnie the Pooh as a killer. Still not quite as fun as I would hope, but much, much closer to what it should be and an improvement on every single level. If I compare this movie to other low-budget horror films, low-budget slashers, it compares pretty nicely because while it's not a great movie, it does deliver the carnage that I wanted. I wasn't bored. I'm not imagining I'm going to rewatch this movie a whole lot in my free time, but I wasn't unhappy while I was watching it in the theater. And I do appreciate that they did dramatically improve the quality from part one to part two. I can't say that the movie is good, but I can say it won't be in my bottom 10 movies of the year, and it won't even be at the bottom of my March ranking. Make of that what you will. Overall, it's a C plus on the entertainment scale, a six out of 10. No reason to see this one in the theater, wait to stream it. But if you're curious, I mean, it's worth 90 minutes of your time to see if it works for you. If you like a bunch of nasty, gnarly, carnage candy. If you wanna hear my thoughts on the first one and hear me just trash that one, check it out right over there in my worst of 2023 video. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much.